stand back and stand by. But I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what. While the first debate was a total mess, there is one moment to me that stood out as the most revealing moment for Donald Trump, as well as the most surprising moment for Joe Biden. So this clip, about a minute long, has it all. And I'm going to break down exactly why this clip is so important. Watch. You have repeatedly we- criticized the the vice president for not specifically calling out Antifa and other left-wing extremist groups. But are you willing tonight to condemn white supremacists and militia groups and to say that they need to stand down and not add to the violence in a number of these cities, as we saw in Kenosha and as we've seen in Portland? Are you prepared to to specifically do it? I I would say almost everything I see is from the left wing. Not from the right so wing. So what are you? What are you? you look, what are you saying? I'm, I'm willing to do anything. I want to see well, peace. Then do it, sir. Say I'm, it. Do it. Say it. Do you want to call them? What do you want to call them? Give me a name. Give me a white name. White supremacists and right like me to condemn? White supremacists and right proud, proud boys. boys. Stand back and stand by. But I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. Somebody's got to do something about Antifa and the left because this is not a right his wing own, problem. This is, this is a left wing. This is a left wing problem. White supremacists. Antifa is an idea, not an organization. Oh, you got it. Not militia. That's what oh, his no, an idea. FBI, his okay. FBI director Gentlemen, said. Well, we're then gonna, you know what? No, no, no we're, done, we're done, sir. All right. Now, let me tell you why this is the most revealing moment for Trump, though I think it's obvious. And In a minute, I will tell you why this is also the most surprising moment for Biden, as his comments there were shockingly accurate. But before I get to that, Trump here, straight up avoiding the question from Chris Wallace about white supremacists, hears Joe Biden say Proud Boys, responds to Joe Biden, and still doesn't say uh, stand down. He says stand back and stand by. Showing you... I mean, if it wasn't already obvious, Trump loves the support from white supremacists. He loves it. It is at least half of his base. I would say his entire base, but a lot of them, I don't think even realize they're white supremacists. But it's most of Trump's base. So, of course, he isn't going to condemn them. Now, let me show you. So, Trump made a claim in that in that clip as well that, oh, he sees more violence from the left. Except when you look at the actual data on this, no, it's almost entirely from the right. So this is the Center for Strategic and International Studies. They have data on this going back decades. Just look in the past few years, since 2016 onward, though you can look at really this entire graph, but the light blue is the right wing. This is percentage of terrorist attacks and plots by perpetrator orientation. Right wing extremism makes up the vast majority of it. And in fact, left wing isn't even on the bar in 2020. The red right there is religious. So a tiny bit of religious extremism and mainly right wing extremism. So it is, again, despite what Trump says, of course, he's not based in any facts, in any reality. He just makes things up on the fly. He doesn't know what he's talking about. And even if he does know what he's talking about, he knows that he's lying about it. Right-wing extremism is the most common form of extremism right now. And the Proud Boys heard Trump's message loud and clear. This from the week. The Proud Boys are celebrating Trump's stand back and stand by debate shout out. And in fact, even made t-shirts. This is from Teespring. You guys see the uh, stand back and stand by. Other uh, shirts here relating to that. Stand back, stand by. Proud Boys. Yeah. Uh, my understanding is Proud is that Teespring did eventually pull these shirts down but you see there they clearly recognized it the anti-defamation league tweeted out saying proud boys are right-wing extremists described as violent nationalistic islamophobic transphobic and misogynistic and going on to say tonight uh trump name checked them at the debate and they could barely contain their excitement Just to add on to that clip as well, Wallace also asked Trump to urge his supporters not to engage in civil unrest over the results of the election. Trump instead called in his supporters to quote-unquote watch polling places, adding that bad things happen in Philadelphia. Here he is calling his supporters to action, telling groups like the Proud Boys 
to intimidate voters at polling locations. This is fascism. Now, voters understand, don't let this intimidate you. If you haven't already voted by mail, I suggest that you vote in person early to avoid the coronavirus as much as possible. Wear a mask. Be safe. Ensure you're in an area that isn't too hard hit right now. If you can vote early, vote early. Because a lot of the mail-in ballots are going to be counted after the election. Meaning that Trump is going to try and claim victory on election day. When a lot of Biden's vote has not yet been counted. As a lot of mail-in balloting favors the Democratic Party. So unless there is a big turnout for for, uh, Joe Biden for in-person voting on election day. Trump is going to try and claim victory on election day, even though most of the ballots will yet have been counted. So if you can, vote in person early, but be safe while doing it. And don't let this crap intimidate you. There is a lot more of you, of the average voter, than there is of of these idiots. Now, (laughs) just give you more reaction here. Brian Kilmeade, who I call the dumb one from Fox and Friends, he's a guy who is... uh, often surprised to discover that Trump is not a good person. So here again, you see Brian Kilmeade calls out Trump for failing to condemn white supremacists. Quote, Donald Trump ruined the biggest layup in the history of debates, the Fox and Friends co-host declared. If you've seen Brian Kilmeade, you understand he is the dumb one. Uh, So here, really shocked that Trump did not um, condemn white supremacists. AOC tweeting out in response saying Donald Trump is a white supremacist. People have been warning about this for a long time. They were ridiculed, called hyperbolic and radical, not because they were wrong, but because others couldn't accept that our country elected a supremacist as president. This is fascism at our door. One more reaction here. Republican Senator Tim Scott said that Trump misspoke about the Proud Boys. If he doesn't correct it, I guess he didn't misspeak. (laughs) <laughs> this is the best coverage for Trump they could possibly do. Uh, because they, they know, Tim Scott knows what Trump is doing. Trump is speaking to the Republican base. Tim Scott knows that his base is full of white supremacy. He knows that. So the best he can say is, well, he misspoke, but you know, if he doesn't correct it, then I guess he didn't misspeak. But he will continue to be a Republican. He will continue to support Trump regardless of that fact. Now, let's get to Joe Biden. This comment at the end, for me, was the most surprising part uh, from Joe Biden at this debate. Joe Biden actually correctly discussed Antifa as an idea, not an organization. So, if you follow my coverage of Biden, he's A lot of his framing of issues, and as well during this debate, is from a very uh, Republican uh, or conservative mindset, where you saw during the debate, Biden discussed how, you know, he wasn't for the Green New Deal, um, he's not for Medicare for all. Again, always reacting to the right-wing framing of these issues as opposed to discussing how it's important that people get health care. And their ideas that we can continue discussing, even if he doesn't support it currently, or the Green New Deal, of course, the importance of of uh, of transforming uh, the uh, the energy system away from fossil fuels into uh, uh, into renewable energies. But on Antifa, Biden actually knew what he was talking about, and he referenced Trump's own FBI director, who yes, discussed that. Antifa is more of an ideology, not an organization. Here is Trump's FBI director. Here is his uh, exact words on this. I, I think what I'm, I'm trying to reflect on is uh, we hear from time to time that this organization, by name, uh, we need to investigate. Uh, the secretary, uh, Desani, if he was here, uh, he would get asked this question, but he's not. Uh, he asked for an investigation of Antifa because they were the, the, the greatest threat to the homeland. And if I'm hearing you correctly, you're saying that it's really not organizations so much as it is ideology. And I don't want to put words in your mouth, but I think that's what I heard. 
I appreciate that. We, uh, we look at Antifa as more of an ideology or a movement than an organization. There you go. This is something that if you know anything about anything, you would already know this unless you fell into the conservative right wing Trump mindset framework that Antifa is somehow an organization. Antifa, or as they call it, Antifa. Antifa simply means anti-fascist. If you are against fascism, guess what? You're Antifa. So it is not an organization. There is no leader. There is no group meetings. It is, it is simply an ideology. It is an idea being against fascism. And Joe Biden actually got this right. <laughs> Despite all of the right wing framing that he constantly uh, has around his his uh, his answers, his, his policy proposals. He got this right and he deserves credit for informing the masses here during this debate watched by millions that Antifa is not an organization and Trump's own FBI director said so. Again, uh, this is going to be the most I have for a debate breakdown. <laughs> if you want to watch my uh, immediate reaction after the debate, you can go to my live stream. I cut it up into chunks on that live stream so you can see uh, below the video in the description box, there's links to different uh, timestamps. You can watch the, the post-debate timestamp, see my reaction. I had the, the surfs on and we discussed our reaction to the debate. But for me, this was the most revealing moment for Trump and the most surprising moment for Biden. And really the only piece of actual uh, information that is worth taking from this entire mess of a debate.